Good evening, all you true believers out there. This is Abel Champion, associate editor at SFX-360.com. Many of you probably know me a little bit better as Gun Ace. And I'm here to introduce a new project that I've been working on called SFX Animated, where we bring together reviews for different series and movies that, you know, have kind of gone under the radar or that really haven't gotten the exposure that we um, want. And, you know, we bring them to light. And so, without further ado, I introduce you our first episode. We're going to be doing a review of... Um, a show that comes on Disney XD, it's called Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes. A few of you probably might have guessed that from the Marvel reference. Either way, um, yeah, like I said, it comes on Disney XD. It's a pretty new show. I mean, it's been on probably about 10, 12 episodes, so probably about three or four months. And um, it's about the Avengers, if that's not evident enough. It basically, it's a throwback to a lot of the old shows that used to come on in the mid-90s. You know, the old Iron Man, Spider-Man, all that good stuff that used to come on. Incredible Hulk. And it's really like the first series to really bring Marvel back to the cartoon genre. I mean, we've had so many great movies, but the cartoon is really where I've, I grew up with. And so, really what we see is that over the course of the series, it, it's designed to be really true to the comics. So, I mean, so even with that comic background, it's pretty evident that the developers are going in their own path, taking their own path to bringing the story to life. But that is not a bad thing at all. I mean, if you watch any of the episodes, you can see that just the story is really fluid. And, I mean, just with the licensing of the characters, it really brings it to life. I mean, they're a menagerie of Marvel characters. And, I mean, the minute you watch it, you're just going to see a ton of familiar faces. I mean, we have Iron Man, Ant-Man, we have Wasp, the Incredible Hulk, Thor. Uh, as the series goes on, they start branching out from the Avengers. We get a few more, a few more that join later on. We get Hawkeye, we get Captain America, we get um, Black Panther. I mean, they're just an amazing cast of villains. In every episode, there's a different villain wrecking havoc, or there's a new team of villains and it's just it's always something new whatever whatever you see it's always something different and like I said it's really a throwback to all the old series that used to come on with a lot of familiar faces it really just keeps the action going however in order to really get an idea of the focus and direction of the series you, you kinda have to take it back to the beginning initially the series started off as a mini series of about 20 episodes that aired online and served to introduce all the Marvel characters. They had individual episodes for Iron Man. They had different episode, a different episode for um, Nick Fury. They had one that introduces Janet Van Dyne and Hank Pym. You know, Ant Man, and Wasp, Thor, and you know, all the different characters. Essentially, it set up the series before the initial episode, which aired and which is officially known as the first episode. Uh, that episode was known as the Breakout, and it basically involves um, all the greatest villains of the world escaping from four maximum security prisons established by different characters in the Marvel Universe. Uh, and so after the breakout it becomes the responsibility of the Avengers to essentially capture each and every one of the villains over again. And so that's where the series takes you from there. However, um, really one of the biggest points in the series is how the Avengers come together initially. And like I said, after the first episode in the miniseries they ultimately come together in this one amazing boss battle essentially on the very first episode in the breakout where um this this really powerful enemy known as graviton he um he is released from the fourth secret prison that's um within the um, marvel universe and he's released he's been in prison there for 10 years because he procured a really powerful um, technique, not not a technique so much, but he a mutation from from experimenting with Shield, and they since Shield can control him, they had to uh, imprison him, and so he's furious at his imprisonment, and he's out to kill Nick Fury, and so the Avengers they come together and they stop him in this enormous Omega battle that it just really en encapsulates the entire essence of the action in in this series, and it's just amazing. There's really nothing that compares to it.
and from there, like I said, the Avengers get together, and that's where the series officially begins. But if you really want to see an amazing fight, you have you don't have to go any further than the very first episode. However, you know, outside of the action, the Avengers just manages to bring together things that other series just haven't been able to do as fluidly. I mean, we've got a lot of superhero series. Very few from Marvel, but I mean, if you look into the DC area of things, we got a lot of DC um, series, like Justice League Unlimited, Justice League of America. We also had um, several, several Superman series, Batman series, and we even had Teen Titans come out, and even the new Young Justice is coming out. But if you look at where they're going, they tend to focus on a lot fewer characters. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but if you look at what Marvel, what um, this new series is doing, what Avengers Earth Mightiest Heroes is doing, is it's bringing together an enormous cast that's not only large and and essentially lucrative in just the amount of people that it brings together, but I mean, at the same time, each character is, has his own personality, his own agenda, his own focus. They're not superfluous or or extraneous every character tends to serve a purpose and I mean it doesn't end with one episode it's not like okay this character was in this episode we'll never see him again like you see in a lot of other series but they always allude to some future event that could possibly happen and it keeps everything just really it keeps you on the edge of your seat really expecting more I mean if you look at the introduction of like Captain Marvel in this series he explains about his his population his people the Kree and you know, he, he even alludes to the fact that the Kree are coming back to the planet, and so you can expect to see him in later episodes. Even at the end of that episode, they allude to the presence of Miss Marvel. And like I said, it just adds so many, so much more dynamics to the series that, just for Marvel fans, it's just it's going to be complete enjoyment all the way through to the end.